Hey guys, what's going on? So I just wanted to do a quick review of all the Star Wars shows that have come out over the past couple of years and in the past. So we'll just go through each one and I'll give my ranking and just kind of a brief explanation. And this isn't including any of the smaller shows. I'm not including like The Resistance or some of the other smaller animated projects and not including Visions as well. So starting off at number nine, I have Andor. I have Andor as a four out of 10. I really didn't like Andor. I really had a hard time getting initially engaged with Andor. I actually didn't even end up finishing the show. It was just too slow for me. I didn't feel like I had enough that really brought me into it to really get into kind of the slow burn that it's explained to be. And I'm more of just a typical Star Wars fan in terms of the force, lightsabers, kind of the whole nine yards there. So there wasn't really enough that got me into the story. I couldn't really understand all that was going on. So that's why it's my lowest show on the list. I understand there's a lot of people that really enjoyed Andor and I totally support that. I can see why. It looks like there's a lot of good cinematography put into Andor. There was a really big budget put into Andor. Uh, there was a lot of good political elements that look like were tied into the show. And I was a really big fan of Rogue One, which is why I really was interested in the start of the show. But it just simply wasn't right for me. So that's why I'm giving it a 4 out of 10 here. Next up, I would have Kenobi. I would put Kenobi as a 5 out of 10. I think looking back at how it went, I don't think Kenobi should have even happened in the first place. I think kind of a lot of the hype surrounding Revenge of the Sith over the past 10 or 20 years is what really made Kenobi a profitable project. I think that's what really got its initial interest, but I really think it kind of ruined some of the story elements that are set up between Kenobi and Darth Vader. I think it would have been better just leaving their meetings at the end of Revenge of the Sith and especially in A New Hope. So I really think it undermines that whole thing. I don't think there was really enough effort put into writing the story and I think we were expecting it to be this immediate sequel to Revenge of the Sith. I think it was too far gone at that point and there was just a lot of disconnected parts of the plot. I think there was too much going on with with all the different side characters, with Leia, and I think it almost undermines the original six movies. I think it was slow in a lot of ways. There's a lot of cheesy dialogue. There was a lot of mistakes made in some of the basic layouts of each episode, and it really didn't build to anything besides Kenobi getting his ground again and beating Vader in the end, so I really think they were just trying to really milk the whole showdown between Kenobi and Vader. So I really think the show was done poorly and I don't think it even should have happened in the first place. But next I have the book of Boba Fett with a 6 out of 10. I don't think the show was bad. I think it started off really well. I think the first episode was decent. I think the second one was really interesting when they go back and kind of show his moments with the Tusken Raiders and how he gets adopted into that community. So I think Boba had a lot of grounds to be a really good show, but then I feel like in the middle, it fell off. It didn't have enough to stand on its own, and it's a mystery how some of the Mandalorian episodes were pushed in there. I don't know if that was the original plan or not, and I think those couple of episodes were done really well. I just don't think they were a good fit for a show that's supposed to be focusing on Boba Fett, and I think the finale was pretty dry and a lot of moments too. So that's why I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. I think there's maybe grounds for um, some other Boba Fett projects, maybe something when he was younger, but I don't think this was executed well. I also don't know why this came out instead of Mandalorian Season 3. I think it almost would have been better to keep Boba Fett as a small part in the Mandalorian, just someone that didn't 
class as contact. And then at number six, I have Bad Batch. I would put Bad Batch as a 6.5 out of 10. I think it's a decent story. I think the idea of the Bad Batch being an alternate version of the clones is kind of interesting. I like the character of Omega, but I think the show has a lot of filler in it. For me, I don't mind some of the other animated Star Wars projects, but especially with the Bad Batch, it's just really hard for me to watch. There's a lot of good story elements put into it. I know there's a good group of people that are really behind the Bad Batch, but I don't think it's a proper spinoff to the Clone Wars, uh, but I'll get back to that later in this review. Uh, next, I would have Ahsoka. I would give Ahsoka a C or a 7 out of 10. I think Ahsoka has a lot of really good moments. I think especially the middle is a good climax for the show. When we get the world between worlds, we get Anakin, we get some Clone Wars flashbacks, but they're more of like a dream sequence. Uh, and I really think the show got to a place where it had really potential to be great but I think it felt flat in the end I think the finale was kind of silly and I'd even say that the beginning episodes are a little bit too slow I think a little bit more could have been done with maybe some of the stuff they're planning for season two I think they could have interjected some of that in there and I think there's a lot of things that were executed poorly such as Thrawn's live action debut I thought Thrawn was kind of silly. So I think there's just a lot of elements in the show that didn't live up to their potential. So that's why I'm giving Ahsoka a 7 out of 10. But I do think there's also a lot of good moments such as the middle or the first fight sequence between Ahsoka and Balin. That episode was done really well, but I just don't think there was enough to give the show average a high enough score. But next, I would have Tales of the Jedi, and I would give Tales of the Jedi an 8 out of 10. I think there's a lot of really good stuff here. There's maybe one or two episodes that are a little on the slower side, and there isn't a whole lot with the shorter style, so that's why it probably wouldn't get a 9 or a 10 for me, but I think it's almost a better spin off to the Clone Wars than the Bad Batch is. I think it's really neat to kind of see more into Dooku's turn to the dark side, more of his moments as a younger Jedi, and even some of the scenes such as Anakin training Ahsoka and Ahsoka right after Order 66 are really interesting. I think there should be a lot more done with Tales of the Jedi going forward, and it should get the volume that a show like Bad Batch has, um, maybe some really long seasons. So I'd be really interested to see what happens with this project. Uh, next, I would have Rebels, but I would have it tied with the next show, which I would have The Mandalorian. I'd have Rebels as an 8.5 out of 10. I think Rebels is also a really good spinoff from The Clone Wars. There's some really good moments in here. I think these new group of characters are a really good team. I think Kanan Jarrus is a really good character. I think Ezra is an excellent character. I think even though we saw him in Ahsoka, I think there could be a lot done with him going forward in Star Wars, especially him as an older character, maybe helping Rey train some Jedi. So I think Rebels is a really good project. And I'd have the Mandalorian tied with Rebels. I'd also give the Mandalorian an 8.5. I think the first two seasons of of the Mandalorian are really good. I think the only thing that brings it down is season three and kind of some of the weird elements done in the Boba Fett show. I think Grogu should have stayed with Luke a little bit longer, but I think the Mandalorian really has the potential to be a strong project going forward for Star Wars. And I think a lot should be put into season four to kind of put it back on top and give it some momentum going forward. And then of course I would have Clone Wars as number one. I would give it a 10 out of 10. I think it's one of the best projects in general besides the movies. And I think what Clone Wars really does well is develop Star Wars and develop the character stories for the younger generations. Maybe not so much now, but especially during the times of the prequels, I think it's really what brought a lot of fans growing up into the franchise. And I think it still passes the 
test of time today. I think it's a really good show all around. There's so many different stories that expand on Star Wars lore. Uh, and I think it even finished strong with a season seven in the past couple of years to really tie it into Revenge of the Sith. And I think you can even see some of the magic that was done in the Clone Wars with even the fan project that came out recently which animates the battle of the hero scene or the face-off between Anakin and Kenobi at the end of Revenge of the Sith in the Clone Wars format. So I think that alone just really shows the a real connection that fans have to Star Wars and it almost brought even more closure to the show and to its connection with the rest of the Star Wars universe. So just a quick kind of review on some of the Star Wars shows. Again, these are totally just my opinions on them. I don't think they're you know, general scores for this show. It's more of just my flavor and my feeling of them. I appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think about these shows, how you would rank them. I think I might do this for some of the movies. So I appreciate you watching and I will see you later.